As inflation continues to rage, a perfect trifecta of influence, both external and internal, are going to push crypto and NFTs to heights previously only dreamed of. I believe this market is about to absolutely melt faces with the amount of gains, and most likely the people who will be the most disappointed are those who sell too early. So today I'm gonna to be walking you through some astronomical growth for both NFT and crypto communities, and I'm gonna be giving you my breakdown on how I plan to handle this. You're definitely gonna to wanna to watch this one front to back, so smash that like button and I hope you guys are having a happy and healthy Sunday. But of course, there's no weekends here in crypto and NFT land. There's just far too much growth, gains and excitement going on right here to leave even for one day. So that's why I'm here with you seven days a week. And if you guys are getting value out of that, smash that like button. Remember to subscribe and put that bell notification on because we're upping our output each and every day here, not just here on LEO Trades, but across the entire space. So with that said, let's dive in. What we see here is a really key and important metric here, which is stagflation, which is of course, as uh, Maya Zahavi says, anyone remember how many times we were told it was just transitory, yet looming winter with soaring energy costs sets up a classic trilemma, inflation, employment, or growth. And essentially they're gonna have to pick which ones they prioritize because the reality is that if you want employment or growth, you're going to have to probably sacrifice the need to stave off inflation. That means we're going to need to print. And in my opinion, and I've predicted this since early 2020, that there will be no end to the printing, if only transitory claims that everything costs zero, which is, of course, the least reliable, least believable thing I've ever heard out of any politician's mouth. And this is from someone who grew up fairly liberal. It's pretty infuriating to try to have someone tell you that $3.5 trillion has no cost. But of course, we're staring down the barrel of a reality where $3.5 trillion is starting to actually cost zero. Little by little, it'll happen. Little by little. But in that process, the things that will become invaluable are hard capped assets with utility in the monetary networks of tomorrow. And that's why we're doing precisely what we're doing right now, which is pushing forth the revolutions that is Bitcoin, Ethereum, DeFi, NFTs, blockchain gaming, and of course, so much more. And I wanted to talk before I get into more specifics here about this statement here by DC Investor. He says, yes, it's easier to identify what is already expensive and will be even more valuable and important tomorrow than to accurately determine what is cheap today and what will be more valuable and important tomorrow. Accept this and find your own alpha. Now, the reality is that this is something that I have been communicating on this channel for as long as I can remember. Finding the gems, finding the low cap, lower cap opportunities that aren't in the top 200, that aren't in the top 100, that aren't in the top 20. Those are the ones that are actually going to radically transform your financial future because when one of them totally figures it out, ship their entire ecosystem and everything starts to take flight and grow in unison, the power of network effect is absolutely something to behold. Now, it's very hard for most people to do this, but it has become my plight and my obsession to do this and to relay that information as fast as I can to you. And in doing so, I know based on the comments and the feedback I've received from this community that is truly allowing for people to elevate themselves at first through altcoins, then through DeFi, now through NFTs, and of course, soon through blockchain gaming. This channel's whole mission is to empower you with the ability to see through the noise and to potentially allocate to the projects that could have this transformational growth. There's zero doubt that getting into blue chips early is the absolute Jedi mind trick, wizardly art of detaching yourself completely from the financial shackles of a nine to five and eventually being able to go full-time crypto, focusing on wealth mastery and simply growing your stack. Once you reach that place and have had a few wins of things that have gone from real off-topic, off-the-radar uh, projects or coins or NFTs to becoming mainstream hits, you'll have enough in the tank to start really firing shots in a way that allows for you to manage risk and grow. Of course, this is not financial advice. I'm just a guy on the internet, but I've done this so many times and I've helped so many people do it. I just want to share this information, but you always have to do your own research and figure things out on your own. Finding your own alpha is the way that you can get there even before me. Again, I'm just doing my own research here in this industry. Obviously, I've spent almost five years now finding the right people, brilliant people in this industry who I can learn from, and I suggest you do the same. If you start here, then great, but don't stop with me. Keep enriching yourself outside.
outside of this channel. It's a huge major key that I want to impress upon you. And just like I predicted, NFT mania is coming back with a vengeance and many people feel like a top or a local top of sorts is in the works. I do believe that there will be local tops, but what we're seeing with NFT is an entirely new store of value emerging. It does feel a little like 2017 in NFT land. There will be a lot, a lot of projects that completely miss the mark. I still believe that Q4 will be really ripe for gains in NFT land. However, as soon as Ethereum starts making its big monster moves, again, I have predicted end of October, then I believe that NFTs in Ethereum value will most likely start to get some of the air sucked out of the room, if only temporarily. You see, NFTs have started to become and behave kind of like the lowest cap altcoins uh, in the entire industry. And it has been a trend that I've seen that after the major market runs, you start to see NFT make sort of a late run. We saw this in DeFi. When DeFi had its crash, we saw NFT projects explode throughout September. When we saw in February, we saw NFT projects explode through March and April. Then we saw the market crash and we saw NFT markets explode through June, July, August. Then we saw a little bit of a movement from Ethereum, from mainstream markets, and now we're seeing NFTs explode throughout uh, early October, late September. So it does feel like there's a little bit of a trade-off between altcoins or sort of mainstream crypto, if we can actually coin that term, and NFTs. And I do believe that there's a narrative that after altcoin season hits, throwing a lot of those profits into NFTs would probably allow you to double, triple, quadruple, maybe even 10x your money if you do it right. We'll get to that at the end of the episode. We also see even more fundamental news here. We see NFTs invading culture with 0xB1, who's a big uh, DeFi turned NFT investor. Uh, CAA just signed his NFT collection. Uh, and so they're going to market this collection as characters. Very interesting stuff. I don't know how I feel about all that. Uh, we also have NFT pop-up shop in the British Museum here. Um, and they actually include a full onboarding experience for visitors. If you pop in here, you can see NFT pop-up shop. We frequently ask questions. Uh, they have introduction, technical information, practical information, buying and selling. They also have information on how to download wallets, including Formatic, MetaMask, Argent, and Engine. Very, very interesting. And if this isn't mainstream crossover, then what is at this point? Then what is? Now, I really like these comparisons. This is something I've been doing a lot on my Twitter, saying, you know, Web2 is followers. Web3 is holders. We see Jess saying that Web2 is rent, Web3 is own. I do believe that. If you think about Facebook, you're renting Facebook in exchange for your attention, in exchange for um, marketing to you. As far as characters in a video game, you're actually renting them um, in exchange for money, not owning them. Whereas the change for Web3 would be ownership of the characters, ownership of the art, ownership of the IP, ownership of the networks. It's very much so a transition of renting and being sort of just a squatter on top of another person's domain to being an owner and a collaborator. It's very, very, very interesting. And I absolutely love this comparison. It's something that guides me as I focus on building and innovation here in the space. We also have Luna coming through with massive, massive account growth. We had 9,000 accounts created in one day on October 8th. And you can see this parabolic growth of accounts here. Again, we've tried to tell you about Luna time and time again. It's a very, very strong blue chip project here in crypto land. Now, I wanted to hop over here because this is a super interesting article talking about how China, despite the crackdown on crypto, has started to go crazy for NFTs. Now, it's always been a little bit of a stereotype that Asian cultures appreciate more cartoony things. And it was the belief, I think, that many people thought that NFTs would catch on more in Asia before they did in the West. Well, that wasn't the case. However, now we're starting to see the explosion of collecting NFTs as a culture taking off in China. And this transition is one of the most crazy ones and most important ones to track. We're going to go through it because it's not exactly what you think, and it's not necessarily going to pump your ETH bags, but it is showing that this is, by all means, ownership of JPEGs, ownership of art, ownership of culture is something that is broadly appealing to all humans across the world, especially when there's scarcity. So let's dive in and talk about this. So the author talks a little bit about the mining ban and then says, of course, that did play out. We've seen almost all miners leaving China, even though we heard that hash rate is back in China. Anyway, let's not talk about that. But little did they foresee the power, the staying power, of the NFT. All of a sudden, their crypto WeChat was full of punk fanboys, ape guardians, and loot revolutionaries. Let us decrypt the China NFT scene a little, and let's start by distinguishing between two types of NFTs we're seeing in China. Web 2.0 NFTs are the JPEGs created by Chinese internet giants such as Alibaba.
Alibaba Tencent. Uh, and the JPEGs are relatively cheap, have no real crypto element, exchanged in RMB, live on a centralized ledger, not tradable on secondary market, have distinct Chinese cultural elements, e.g. slangs, internet phenomena. Now, Web 3.0 NFTs are similar to the crypto NFTs most people are familiar with these days, but there are some differences. Chinese Web 3.0 NFTs contain Chinese cultural elements, example collections, Rivermen, Kung Fu Hero. Rivermen is derived from the longest painting in China along the river during the Qingming Festival, uh, considered a national treasure, multi-chained as many of them are launched on BSC, gamified, pioneered by PopMart's blind boxes. Many NFTs are not selling JPEGs, but selling a surprise experience. You don't know what you'll get. This is like the gotcha games, and this is very similar to the 10,000 collection PFPs that have the reveal. That's exactly what's going on right now. So I disagree with this. The author goes over a bunch of clubs here that exist in NFT in China, but the point here is that NFTs are evolving in a little bit of a different way in China, but is very much a culture that is contagious and catching on. The point here is that NFTs are a global phenomenon, and for most people in the world, 99.9% .9 of them, they've never even heard of this, but the people who had are obsessed. They're dumping more and more money into it each and every day, and the pace of innovation, growth, and excitement around NFT is something that will grow, I think, faster than anything in crypto before, and potentially be one of the fastest revolutions the internet has ever seen. So watch this space. Now, I have been preparing you for a micro dip of sorts here in Bitcoin, and just know analysts are seeing the 52K level and the 51K levels as particular buy zones, though it does not feel as though the dip really wants to dip that hard. We're also seeing reports from Citibank saying that clients started with Bitcoin and went, quote, down the rabbit hole. A senior city executive told London Conference that the bank's clients are expressing a growing interest in Bitcoin and DeFi. Soon, they'll be interested in JPEGs too, mark my words. And finally, we have the homie Lupify creating the Treeverse, which is a little game here using NFTs, and they just got investment from Animoca Brands. Now, as stagflation starts to take over, the desire to print, print, and print some more will only serve to line the coffers of anyone currently invested in crypto, or in my opinion, the most asymmetric risk portfolio comes from NFTs. Again, I love Ethereum. I consider it the future of blockchain innovation, and of course, the most trusted ledger outside of Bitcoin that you can actually build stuff on. So what I'm looking forward to out of these JPEGs is absolutely maximizing my exposure to Ethereum. And when you read the tea leaves, CAA signing talent, WME signing talent, Citibank, the British Museum, China continuing to become ravenously excited about NFTs, blockchain gaming taking off, it is very clear the next phase for this industry. And the next two to four years to me is all about video games with NFTs. So watch this space as I'm gonna be giving you the absolute best projects, those early blue chips, as that's my favorite thing to do is to try to identify them. I'm not always right, but I've hit some of these early calls out of the park and in doing so, I've been able to enrich so many of my followers. And that is my goal for what I wanna do for you. Of course, you're gonna to have to make your own decisions. You're gonna to have to build your own conclusions. This is just a starting place, but this is my focus, is building value for my audience, both literally in the knowledge that I'm able to give, as well as if you take this as a starting place and are able to build your own strategies from it, hopefully you can come back to me with an amazing story of success like some of the other watchers of this channel. As always, keep that bell notification on because I'm gonna be coming at you with some information that is time sensitive in this crazy Q4 face melting pump. And you're definitely not gonna to wanna to wake up seven hours later and see that you missed a massive alpha leak. The bell is good for your health. With that said, I'm Elio Trades. You can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. Link is in the description. Please smash that like button if you like this video and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.